Hello everyone. Um, I think this is the fifth video that I'm recording on Biba. In the previous videos, we did example to see how Biba can help to assemble objects with the planar sheets and then disassemble them into the part that can be shipped to fabrication. And we learned also how to assign different joint types to each edge in our assembly. However, the examples were quite boring, I would say, because they were all sort of boxes with the orthogonal joints, and that's not really what BIPA is designed to do. BIPA is capable of handling much more complex geometry. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to take a geometry that has uh, more than three faces coming together in one vertex and has um, non-orthogonal angles. So without further ado, let's jump in Rhino and Grasshopper and build this example. So here's my geometry. It's basically nothing but an, a twisted box. It has only a cap on the top and the open from the bottom. It's also a mesh object. Um, yeah, of course, it's an open mesh object. And because of that, we're going to use a different component to convert it to planar PPS. So let's just open our grasshopper and take our mesh into um, grasshopper. Okay, now I'm going to convert it to a PPS using mesh to PPS component because we're starting with a mesh. If the component ran successfully, then I would recommend you just hide the preview. And now what we can do, um, simply pass it to our assembly. And then we need to decide on the thickness of the material. For this example, I'm going to use an 18 mm thick material. And we're going to use also the negative shell. And and that's because I would like to have the mesh representing the outer face of my object. And therefore, the part has to be built on the negative side of the mesh faces. So that's why we use negative shell. Um, so we just connect that into our assembly. I don't need to assign a joint type here because I'm going to use a default mitre joint for this example. So we're pretty much done. We just need to disassemble our assembly. Here we go. And then um, unfold it. So use unfold, just like previous tutorial, nothing new. And boom, you have the result. So let's um, see how it looks when I unfold them everything laid on the XY plane and looks good. We're ready to go for production. But there is a tiny problem here, which is not visible, I believe, until I bake the parts. Just gonna bake them and look at them more closely. So let's hide our original mesh. We don't want it now. And now let's look at, for example, um, these two parts. So push them a little bit over and then we can see that if I run a Boolean, Boolean, Boolean intersection command, um, I'm gonna see an intersection and that means these objects are clashing with each other and I believe could possibly clash at the bottom so let's have a look um, so I'm just going to take these two and look at it yeah it's also intersecting you can check it I have an intersection, a pretty big one. 
So, what is the solution? Can Biba help on this? The answer is yes. So, let's go back to Grasshopper and look for the component, the assembly component. And we have an input. We have never used it so far. And that's the component which is going to save us. So, um, let's see what it does. The node is actually responsible for resolving the parts at each node of the assembly, which is basically a vertex in our uh, geometry. There are a few ways to deal with this. Um, you can see different components here. I'm going to use today a single trim node. And the reason it's called single trim node is that it tries to cut only once or trim the part at this corner only once and get rid of that uh, intersection. But it has to be very smart because you don't want to be uh, aggressive and just cut half of the material over there and it will look ugly and unstable. So it has to really minimize the amount of material that is going to remove from the part. So now we will see how it works. Um, just would connect that to my node type here. And then I get an error here. We'll look at the error. And it says that's unable to resolve node 1. So it means that there is a problem at vertex 1. It could happen because of the tolerance uh, you're using or it's just or the algorithm does not have enough contingency to, to um, converge. So it's not a big deal. You can just go quickly under the setting and just change the precision of the component. So I'm going to pick number six and then we will look again. We have the same problem. We actually have more problem now. So we're going to reduce that to four and then refine. So this means that the precision was too high and it failed to calculate. So we reduce that and then we can see the it's not a major change, but it now it works for everything. Um, so let's go back and build the, the actual object again. So we can compare the result. Um, so let's hide this again. And now if I take these two, oh, I can see already that there's no problem. But just to prove it, I'm going to take that out. And we will just say pooling intersection. And then we see no, no intersection. This will perfectly fit together. And then you can see that this is happening everywhere that there is a chance of collision. So as a matter of fact, when you have two faces which are not sharing an edge, that means that there is a chance to collide. Because if they share the edge, they won't only collide at the edge. And the edge is not possible to collide because the joint has already resolved that intersection. But when there is no common joint, um, then there, there is a possibility that they collide. So these two as well, as you can see, there is a little bit cut like that. At this two, we can you can already see that we have a small. Um, triangle here in a small nice triangle which is removed from the material in order for these two to to not clash basically um, and this is kept to the minimum possible so that's important and this is what BB can do for you enables you to put things like this together without any hassles so we just learn how to resolve the intersection of the parts at the vertexes using the node component. I believe this is good enough for this video tutorial. The other options in the node and also the other node components will be discussed in future videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.